I have a box here from Joe's Motor Pool, and inside is going to be a new set of brake shoes, liners, and the basic hardware to install them. These are for a Willis MB. They also make them for Ford GPW. And take a look inside here, and I think I'm going to be really pleased. I've heard good things about these brake shoes. And then we've got the brake shoes and liners all packed up nicely, and the hardware is on the inside. Open this up, and let's give them a quick inspection. This video is going to be about installing brake pads on the 1943 Willis MB. And uh, if I'm going to go through the trouble, I'm going to use quality parts as such from Joe's. These are available from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. The rivets look real nice, and the pads look nice. I believe those are semi-metallic pads. We've got the WO part number on the outside of the shoe. That's a nice touch. I like the originals. And uh, that's that would be the rear shoe. And then we'll open up this. You'll notice it's a little bit longer on the, the liner itself, and it's also marked with a WO part number. That's, that's a super nice touch. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these. They feel really good. They look really good. It doesn't surprise me. Joe's Motor Pool does a great job at reproducing these parts, and always proud to use them. And here we've got the return spring, all coated up nice. And we'll give that a test here and see if it's nice and flexible. It looks good, and we'll pop the paint off there. And they paint these sometimes that sticks together. It's a good idea to do that. The 9-inch brakes seem to get a bad rap out there in the vintage Jeep world, but if they're adjusted properly and all the parts are in working order, they will stop your Jeep on a dime. Last but not least, we get this nice new set of brass cams that I'll show you where those go on the shoes later. Let's see what I can get into trouble with these fine, beautiful parts. Here we go. Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, we'll be installing brake pads in the hardware on a 1943 Willis MB. Now, when you are replacing these pads, usually they're wore out or they've wore into your drums. Make sure you check your drums and make sure you got a nice surface. There's no gouges and wearings in there because if you do, you're just wasting your time putting new brake pads in. We did the video on how to adjust the brakes after they're all installed, and I got a message from a guy, and he says, hey, that's great. You showed me how to you know, adjust the brakes. That's a wonderful video. How do I put them on? There's a certain way they go on. Is there a certain, you know, is there a long side and a short side? And the answer is yes. Check the video out. And I'm kind of laughing and smiling there because I've done it a couple times myself where I put these on wrong. On a Willis MB and a Ford GPW, the long shoe goes towards the front of the vehicle and the short or the secondary shoe will go to the rear on the backer plate. I'll lay them down on the floor exactly like that because I've goofed it up a couple times and I don't want to do it this time. Check the position or orientation of the piston, the slot in the piston on your cylinder, and make sure that it is vertical, not horizontal, as the tongue of the brake shoe will actually fit into that part of the piston. As you see here, the tongue of the shoe will go inside there. Uh, that's another thing I've done a couple times where I've had them horizontal and figured it out the last minute. Here we have the cam, the top adjusting cam, and that just goes into the hole that's on the backer plate. You'll insert it through there, and on the back side you will use the lock washer and the nut. And I'm just going to hand tighten them for the time being until we get right down to adjusting. And I'll keep the lower point of that cam towards the outside of the brake shoe just so I can get the brake shoes on easily. We'll go ahead and install the one on the opposite side. You need two. These are part number A754 and are listed as brake eccentrics. Now I'm going to show you the old trick of putting these shoes on without using a brake tool or a spring tool to stretch the spring. I've assembled the brake shoes with the return spring as shown. Make sure you've got the long one towards the front and install the tongue into the slot on your cylinder and then into the bracket and then stretch the front one, insert it into the groove on the cylinder and then push that to the outside bracket. And we've got that all installed without any tools and the lower holes are lined up where the pins will go in pretty well. I've got the plate, part number 637901, all cleaned up, and I've got my anchor pins that I've cleaned up. These are originals, and I'm going to insert the anchor pin into the plate, as I'm showing you here, and then I'm going to install the cams onto the back sides, exactly where they would go on the locations. I'll show you here what I mean. On the bottom here, you can see exactly where that cam will go on there, how that's keyed. The brass cams are part number 637900, and as I showed you before, they slip right onto the point there, and then they'll kind of clip on there. Now, you've got to hold all this together when you insert these into the bottom holes of the brake shoes, because they may want to come apart. 
For me, this is just an easy way to do this and it seems to work. The manual tells you that you can put the cams into the bottom sides of the shoe and then assemble all the hardware. For some reason, maybe it's just the way that I do things, it's easier for me to do it this way. So I'll hold this whole assembly together and then I'll adjust my shoes just a little bit to make sure I got my holes lined up as best as I can. And then I'm gonna insert this whole assembly into those holes on the brake shoes being very careful not to drop anything, and then I'm going to press with my thumbs and my hand, and maybe you got to wiggle around a little bit. I'm going to press with those until the cams pop into place on the lower part of the shoes. You'll feel the cams drop into place, and they'll make like a little click, and then you know they're seated. I'll take the camera out sideways, and I'll show you how everything fits together from an angle so you can know exactly how it's going to look. You can't see any bit of the cam. Everything's nice and flush and tight. Now I can go on the back side and install the lock washers and the nuts to the back of the anchor pins. At this time, I'm not going to use any anti-seize on the back side of here. That is recommended by some of my friends and some of the mechanics I've spoke to in the past. For the time being, like I said, I'm just going to put the lock washer and the nut on and hand tight it. I will make sure that I put that dimple, as you see right there on the anchor pin at the bottom of the screen, I will turn those inward as that's where you're to start from as you do your final adjustment once all the brakes are installed. Go ahead and install the other lock washer and the nut on the other side and move on to the next wheel. All four on the Jeep are the same. Now I know, I know, I know the old rule, I've read it myself, the Bob rule, B-O-B, -B, the big M on the back. And that would be the case if they were self-actuating brakes, which they're not. They're, they're anchored at the bottom, so they're called, they're not self-actuating brakes, and that's a whole other topic. So uh, the Willis thing uh, on these old vehicles, up to, I think it's up to the early CJs that do the same braking system. Uh, it's, it's the long one goes to the front, and that's going to give you some good stopping power. If you haven't yet, check the video out where we actually uh, show you how to adjust the brakes properly. And again, make sure you got good drums, otherwise your new pads are just not going to do you any good. All right, y'all. Until next time, keep it safe. Wait a minute. Got to give the plug for the videos. Um, if you'd like to follow along what we're doing with the 1943 Willis MB, you can do so by subscribing down there on the bottom. And we appreciate the subscriptions. Any comments? Any comments are accepted, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, we're all in this together, I suppose. Uh, and also ding that bell so the next time I post a video, you can be alerted that I've uh, uh, posted it. All right, then. Let's get the last go. Here we go. Till next time, keep it safe. Happy Jeep.